Hello everyone, Raven of the Retro Dev here, and welcome to my QBasic tutorial series. In this tutorial, uh, we're going to be taking a look at the print command and all of the various ways in which you can use it to format text and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, and as well, we're also going to look at clearing the screen, ending the program, comments, uh, the difference between positive and negative numbers with the print command. And we'll also take a look at LPrint. Um, and LPrint will only work if you have a printer hooked up and it's set up through either DOSBox or uh, if you're on QB64, it might actually work. Um, but I'm not sure. I've never tested that command uh, inside of QB64. But if you're on 86box and you follow my setting up a printer tutorial, uh, that one works quite splendidly. So uh, it'll you can print in various different ways. So uh, before we get started and carry on, what do you need to actually use this tutorial? Uh, you will need either QBasic, uh, QuickBasic 4.5, or even 7.1, which is called QuickBasic Professional Development Systems or so forth. Uh, or you can just use QB64 if you don't want to set up you know, either 86box or DOSBox. Um, there's a link to all to QB64 in the description uh, where you can download it and use it. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'll actually be using Quick Basic, and let's go ahead and get started. So, comments, comments, and clearing the screen. So, what do we need to do in order to make a comment? Well, it's very simple. We either need to use the rem command or an apostrophe, and rem is the old way to make a comment. And if we were to just hit F5 right now, uh, nothing happens. Our program just runs through the interpreter and it just spits out well we haven't actually printed anything so you know it we can even see the command that I used to launch uh quick basic um and the downside to rem uh aside from having to type out literally rem uh is that it can't go to the right of a command so for example we want to clear the screen we use cls which stands for clearing the screen if we were to do rem clears the screen and hit F5, we would get an error. If we want to, uh, you know, have a comment to the right of any command, we just use an apostrophe. Now, I pretty much only use apostrophes. I don't really like the rem statement, uh, so you'll pretty much never see me ever use it. But it's good to know that it's there, and it's an option that you can have. And if you hit F5 now, the screen is clear, and our comment is working as intended. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to go down... And I'm just going to say ends the program. So end just tells the program that it's ended. Now, technically, in this small example, we don't need this. Uh, but it's good to get into habits. The other thing that I would like to point out is anytime you get stuck, and I mean anytime you get stuck, uh, Quick Basic, QBasic, all of them, they have built-in online help. And you just hit F1, and it pulls up beautiful documentation which explains everything with examples and the see also which links to different portions of the um the viewport as not viewport sorry i was i was reading the thing there um and it, you it's just honestly the built-in documentation is fantastic you can hit escape and it'll clear back out of that um truly if you need any help just hit f1 there's tons of examples it's quite nice actually uh and it's all built in so, how do we print something to the screen? Well, for any of you who have ever used BASIC before, this part's not going to come as much of a surprise. But we just do print, and then we need to print our string constant, which is, in this case, we want it to be hello world, and we hit F5. Now, you'll notice that it's at the top left portion of the screen. Now, uh, we're printing in technically screen zero, uh, which is text mode uh, at the moment. And one thing that's very, very important to note is text mode does not work in pixel space. So if you're used to modern, you know, uh, computing and so forth, everything is based around pixels. Uh, this is text mode. So this is based entirely based on characters. And by default, the screen is 80 characters. So 80 columns and by 25, 25 rows. So we're starting at the top left here. And um, it's just, we'll see more about what that truly means. And uh, also, don't, don't be too alarmed if, like, you, you don't, you know, immediately understand everything. Um, 
you know, every week there'll be a new tutorial and you'll slowly and gradually begin to understand more and more of it. Okay. So what if we wanted to like print a new line? Like, let's say, you know, we had, um, I don't know, uh, just, okay. This line here. And uh, let's see. Okay. Went to the end of this uh, screen there. My bad. And, you know, we wanted this to be, you know, one below. So we wanted to move it down one row. That's no problem. We just do print. You don't even have to put in the double quotes or anything. You just leave it blank, hit F5. It'll just print a blank line and we just move on. Very lovely. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, different... Um, we're going to look at how do you print variables inside of your string. Now, once again, we're not going to cover variables in this tutorial, but, and we should probably make this, let's make this uh, negative 20 actually for the sake of this tutorial. Okay. So this is actually quite simple to do. We'll just do print A and B, and then we'll just hit F5 there. And now, as you can see, um, it printed both exactly as you know, you would think it would. And we're going to cover semicolons immediately right after this. So don't worry about what the semicolon itself does. And you're going to notice something very interesting as well. So semicolon, what, what is the semicolon for? So the semicolon basically will print everything in your print statement next to each other without a space. Now you're probably immediately asking yourself there, there's definitely a space there. <clears throat> and technically there is right here. Um, However, there's actually not a space right here at the beginning because you'll notice that 10 is slightly moved over one character. Um, the reason for this is because QBasic can tell the difference between a positive and a negative number. And even though it's not there, it knows that it's positive. So it leaves this space, uh, sorry, it leaves that space blank. Um, and this is why when it's a uh, negative number, you get the lovely little uh, negative 20, the subtract symbol. If you were to, you know, uh, just say it's a positive 20, uh, you'll notice that you just get a lovely big blank space in here. And now let's look at it in a, a bit more of a proper manner, maybe so we can like, you know, wrap our heads around it just a little bit more. So we'll do print and we're just going to do our hello world, much like we did before. But this time we're just going to do the semicolons and you don't actually have to uh, put the spacing in here. It will actually automatically do it. Um, I went on ahead and did it because I like to, you know, it's a little bit of formatting, but it'll auto format. If we hit F5 now, you'll notice as stated, the semicolon just prints everything on one line. But. If we were to do, say, A here, you will see that it adds the space. And this is because, once again, you know, if we were to, say, change this over to the B, you'll notice that it's all completely and utterly one line. And that's just how QBasic works. And it's something you kind of need to be aware of, um, you know, later on. Because if you're trying to do some kind of formatting like let's say you're building like a graph and stuff out it'll be very vital to to know that so you don't accidentally uh you know end up throwing something into the next line or you know you're wondering why your formatting is slightly off so what if we want to actually like you know put some distance between everything so there is something called print zones inside of qbasic and i'm just going to do print and we're going to do zone one comma and this is where the commas come into play so commas uh will print each of these uh string constants in their in in whatever print zone so as we can see here we'll do zone two and then we'll just hit all right put a space there we'll hit f5 and as you can see we have zone one zone two and you can see they're roughly a divider on the screen um i think there's five of them Let's see, let's go to zone three, zone four. You know, it would help if I uh, formatted that properly. And then we'll do zone five, and then we'll hit. And there you go. So you have zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four, zone five. And let's see what happens when we do zone six here. Let's put a space, F5. 
and automatically wrapped around. And the reason for that is, is because it couldn't fit uh, all of that. So let's just do Z. Now it wraps around because it doesn't fit. So we'll just leave that. So each and every single one of these zones will uh, go over. Now, um, I, I have my screen stretched, so it's actually going to look a little different. If I did proper aspect ratio like I should be doing, uh, this would actually look much better. But these are actually all evenly spaced. And as stated, you have five zones uh, in which you can work in. And you can pretty much put anything you like um, within. But if it goes outside of the zone, it will uh, carry over and push it down uh, to the next line. So we're just gonna we're just gonna remove that there and make it all nice and proper because I do like that formatting. So the next thing we're gonna cover is tabbing. So tabbing doesn't do what you think it does. This is as far as like it doesn't add a tab. Um, but what it does do is it allows you to specify the exact position. So we're gonna do. Um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna format this a little bit here. Uh, let me say print zones, and then I am going to add another print and do print, Oops. and then we'll have five to make sure that's proper. Okay, so now that we have a bit of formatting, let's let's cover uh, tabs. So like I said, tabs. Essentially, what you're doing is you're telling QBasic where to start printing. Um, and remember, you only have 80 columns. So if you go further than that, it's going to wrap around. But there's also another thing that can happen. So we'll do print, and then we'll do tab. And then let's start it at character space 10, semicolon. If you don't add the semicolon, it'll add it. So it's up to you on that one. And we'll do hello world. And then we'll hit a 5. And as you can see, it, it went over exactly 10, and then it started printing Hello world. Now, what if we were to say add another tab here and we were to make it 10 as well, and then we were to do, I don't know, a tab of 10, for example, and we were hit F5. It put it on a new line. Now, why did it put it on a new line? Well, the answer to that is, is because you told it to print tab of 10. And let's say we told it to do 40. We'll just make sure we're far enough over that we don't bother it. There you go. It's now starting at uh, column 40, which should be somewhat in the middle of the screen. Um, and that's something very much, so we'll change that to be 40 there so it actually matches properly. Um, that's something very much to keep in mind. And even if we were to, like, say... You know, shrink this, for example, uh, so it's smaller. It doesn't matter uh, because we've told this to start at 40. And this is a very nice way to, uh, you know, exactly like structure and uh, lay out your code, not your code, but like your formatting so that everything, you know, functions at least roughly the way you think it would. So, the next thing we're going to look at here, I'm just going to throw a print statement into here to give us a nice space. And we're going to look at LPrint. Now, LPrint is not something that I use a lot of, um, but it does allow you to, uh, you know, print to the screen. And uh, sorry, not print to the screen. It allows you to print to the printer. So we can do hello world. And if the printer is set up properly, um, we didn't, you notice we didn't get anything like anything at all. Uh, we just have our L print and then a blank line. Like what happened there? Well, that's because we literally printed to the printer. So I'm just going to open up a window here and it'll, it'll flicker. So, uh, sorry about that. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna pop it out of full screen so that it, it doesn't do that. Cause that would actually be a little annoying. Now, unfortunately, uh, I guess due to the printer um, that I have currently set up, it did not print correctly. <laughs> it printed it as a PS file. Uh, it did not fully. Uh, yeah, it, it can't open that. Okay, so let me just do another print. It may have needed to take longer. 
And we just give it a second here. Maybe, possibly. I'll probably have to set up the printer. I'm not really ever going to use this command, and I don't think either anyone else will, to be totally honest. So I'm actually not too bad about just skipping that command and just moving on. Uh, I would have to uh, change my printer uh, in order to uh, get that one to fully work. But basically, it just dumps it out into a .ps file, and it doesn't do the proper final conversion over um, to uh, a PDF so I think that one would work if I changed it over to a text printer and uh, had it dump it out into a text file. Okay, so that ends this tutorial. Um, our end statement. Oh, do we put an end statement? Oh, you know, it helps if I'm actually on the window. Yes, we did. Okay, I was like, did we actually do an end statement there? Because, you know, we, uh, we have so much blank space here. I just want to drag this up. Okay, so that ends this tutorial. Um, and the next tutorial, we're going to cover variables, and uh, we're just going to slowly and surely work our way across all the various different features that you could find inside of QBasic. And I hope everyone liked this uh, video. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any, like, if you run into any issues, uh, you know, you can put in the comments below, or you can join the forums. There's a link to that as well. Um, and go on ahead, and uh, we'll. I'll try to help you with anything you can if you have any issues. I will see you all in the next one. Thank you all for watching.